How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Knoll Top Farms. My name is Chuck. Today's video is about the repair of a Jacobs Super Ball bearing chuck. It's a 16N, which has a capacity from 1 8 to 3 quarters inch, and the repair we're going to be making is to its mounting socket. The mounting socket got a little chowdered up in its previous life, and so we're going to go ahead and try and make a repair. Why don't we go ahead and head on over to the bench, and we'll take a look at what we're going to do, and how we're going to do it. And I'm going to bring this in as close as I can without losing focus. This little short lens has a very limited focal capacity, if that's even a term. Anyways, I'm sure you can see the damage. It's pretty bad. Uh, normally I would, wouldn't would try and fix something like this, but these uh, super ball bearing chucks are no longer made in the USA, and this is a US one, and it works very well as far as the operation is concerned. The jaws are a little worn, but they're not terrible. Uh, they seem to have a fairly good hold. I mean, the corners are still real sharp on them, but I know that's not really where it gets gripped. The jaws are, the jaws are smooth. They don't really look worn. At least not terribly, but yeah, that's pretty gnarly. Anyways, my plan is, let's get this opened up so I can set it down without it tipping over. You can see there, it spins rather smoothly. So my plan is to create a new um, I'm not going to weld it. Basically, I'm going to turn this down uh, Put her in there and then turn the new taper concentric to not the chuck body not the chuck itself but i'm going to put a, uh, a pin in here and then chuck it up on that pin and so with the pin running concentric in the four jaw it uh, should run true if i um if i turn the taper while it's while it's on here so that is the plan and uh i'm going to be using this for my lathe i my i believe this would be overkill for my drill press um i already have a uh, truck that goes up to five eighths and I, that's got a half horsepower motor so i don't think i'm gonna put this on here and my drill press doesn't have a Morse taper it has a, a Jacobs number six stub adapter and I don't really want to permanently put this chuck on there although that is a uh, a possibility uh, but I don't think I'm gonna do that I'm gonna try this first so uh, yeah, the reason I'm doing that is because the, the hole is, I, I'm going to have to clean this out in order to get that, the, the, uh, my shaft to go in there, to seat in there properly. It's got a bunch of chowder in there, and then once I start ripping up what's left of the little bit of Jacob's taper that's in there, it's not going to matter. It's not like I'm going to benefit anything by putting another, uh, stub adapter in there so if it doesn't work it's not like i lose anything right right so anyways uh i guess we'll get started by cleaning out the back end of this chuck and uh, i am going to chuck this up in the lathe on the body for now uh maybe i don't know I, i'm not sure i want to put all that all that uh strain on the chuck jaws that I don't that's not necessary you know at the when I turn down this taper I'm going to be taking really small cuts and and uh, it should be a, 
a relatively low pressure uh, operation but cleaning this stuff out is uh, basically um, it's an unknown it's hardened material and uh, things can catch um, you just never know what's going to happen so uh, it, I don't want to put that strain on the jaws if I don't have to so I'll probably will end up finishing the clean out w with it on the uh, on the jaws so that I can make sure that the hole is concentric with the jaws and then the, the adapter will be better centered so let's get this set up in the chuck and uh, go from there I wonder if this locks up when I get it yeah I guess it does it'll lock up when I get something in there so I'm gonna tighten it all the way I just don't want anything spinning around when I'm in there. Now it would be nice if I could get a rebuild kit, but that's not part of the chuck that they they sell. And like I said, this is a U.S. made, and they, I mean, they still sell them used, but <laughs> why buy a used one when I've already got one? Anyways, that's on there. I don't really want to bite too hard into this, but I guess it's hardened steel, so whatever. Like I said, if I screw it up, then I just haven't lost anything. This is a gift from my buddy, Martin. Thank you, Martin. Okay, um, this is a little too small for the boring bar that I have, so I'm just going to go at it with some drill bits and see if I can't get that cleaned out. All right, folks, uh, we're back. Oops. <laughs> Low hanging light there. Um, yeah, we didn't, uh, I didn't realize that the battery went out on me last night. And uh, so I missed a bit of footage. And I guess I'll take this apart. Well, I don't really want to do that because I have it set right now at a pretty good spot. Uh, I'll just explain what's going on. Basically what I've done is I've taken the the, uh, the head of the chuck out of the jaws. I turned down a piece of steel about four inches long and got that trued up to the to the chuck you know by turning it down get it all concentric and whatnot. Um, that's a technical term. Uh, <clears throat> And then I've tightened the chuck down on that steel mandrel in order to get the chuck to run more true or true to the the center of the jaws. And uh, I began boring it out and I was uh, really worried that this tool steel was going to be really hard but uh, <clears throat> I don't know maybe they haven't didn't harden it or what. It uh, isn't cast iron but it really turns like that so it's got a real high carbon content and I don't need to use any oil or coolant to get it out of there it actually turns out of there really easily um, the one problem I am having is my boring bar has got quite a bit of deflection in it it's just a regular steel shaft it's a criterion boring bar um, and uh, it's doing the job it's just as it gets farther back in the hole it kinda it almost actually seems like it's backing off on the compound or the cross slide but but it's not it's just uh... it's just the spring of the tool so anyways uh... that's where we're at we're almost uh, to the point where i'm uh... i've got all of the uh... the damage out of there can't really see that right now but uh... Yeah, well, you can. You can see there's just this last little section of uh, of damage left. And out of focus. I'm sorry about this camera, guys. I'll, I'll get a better one eventually, but uh, it's just where we're at right now. So this is the last point of damage right here. I'm going to continue turning until I get all of that out. And uh, then we'll go from there. So let's get back to turning. Uh, 
At first, I got to oil up my machine. Well, maybe not. It's all the reservoirs are still full. I'll do the carriage. Yeah, these are still full. I don't need to pressurize those. Carriage in the waist, and I'll be ready to go. One really lame thing about spring out here is that it really brings in the gnats. I've got a bad gnat problem, and they just seem to like the machines. They get on all the oily surfaces and just die in the oil. Little gnats. Okay, that's about good. Do I need anywhere else? No, I think we're good. Okay. You can see there still is a little bit of run out on the outer body. And uh, even in the hole itself, but it's a lot less than it was when I was holding the, the, the drill chuck by the the head itself. You can actually see there is no run out in, in the front of it. So I don't really know how to uh, eliminate that. It's less, and so less is better. pushback I'm getting I, I mean I continue to make passes until I uh, I get to the point where I want so anyways uh, I'm not gonna bore you with that I will uh, bring you back when we get to the point where I'm done turning here a okay, quick change uh, and I'm not talking about my tool post uh, just a quick change of plans I've moved the chuck uh, body all the way up into the jaws of the three jaw and uh, I want to do that in order until at least I get the uh, the damage out of the body because uh, what's happening with the uh, with it having a bit of run out and also interrupted cut it's really almost just kind of it's exaggerating it so um, in order to eliminate that I'm bringing it closer in and just tightening up the whole affair and uh, we're still getting a lot of deflection in the boring bar and I'll excuse me and I'll show you that here but uh, I just wanted to bring you guys back before I got finished and uh, wanted to show you that I moved this in until such time that I get it where I'm gonna bring it back out center it on that mandrel and then make a finish pass in this bore until you know to get them to run concentric theoretically <laughs> Bar really flexing there. It was making. 
making the whole piece move in the on that mandrel. The mandrel was flexing. But you can see it really backing off on the cut. And it may be taking up the uh, Taking up the slack in my backlash. I got about 30,000 backlash in my cross slide, which isn't really bad for a 100 year old machine, but bad enough. But once it gets past the section of damage, it actually quits, uh, quits bouncing around so much and the deflection goes, goes down a considerable amount. Anyways, you can see how this is reacting just like uh, cast iron. I mean, it may even be cast iron. I thought it was dual steel, but I don't know. It really acts a lot like cast iron. It's definitely not hard. So we'll bring it back. Okay, well, I got most of the taper out. Um, it was tapering from, you know, the uh, front to the back about 50 thousandths. And I've got it down to, I don't know, a whisker. Uh, now I'm going to pull it back out uh, and set it up on the mandrel. 